Good morning, you guys. I hope you're doing well. I haven't done a video in a while, so here's an update on some projects, some happenings. Uh, this is rain catchment. So I actually, I don't even remember what all I've documented and put out there. There's, sometimes I make videos and they don't make it out. But um, so the rain catchment is pretty much done. Uh, this was two tanks that have been here for a while. I recently had to cut this pipe so this was like a twenty dollar expense and some inconvenience so i i took a lot of time i um put teflon tape you know on the threads for these i knowing that they were going to be permanent joints and <laughs> they still leaked it was ridiculous so what i had to do i don't know if you see all these is i had to go in with an exacto blade and i had to shave off the shoulder of the threads on the male end and um so if you are doing something like this, I think doing that in advance, because uh, it was just really short. So this was only designed, I guess, to accept a cap or maybe some thread that was, I don't know, just better or different, but the pipe thread on the PVC just would not hold. Um, so now I have a bunch of uh, repair links. So here's the some of the plumbing. Um, this is just a hose. So for potential to take water somewhere. This one that's, um, you can see, is pressure regulated. This is going to the chicken run. So this goes to nipple waterers and to a hose over there. And then this one that's fully open, this goes to the sink and it goes to the blackberry row for irrigation and it goes to a future row of something else for irrigation. And then on the other side, I didn't open this one up yet, so that's why this tank's empty. Um, the reason for that was because I was thinking about draining this completely to rinse it out because I had left the top open for a minute, but um, it's not that dirty. And then this end, it was a real quick, so I just, you know, had some threads here intentionally thinking I might build on to want to connect more tanks. Um, but this hose is running over, well, you can't see it, but it's catching water off of the big roof. So the shed roof, which is like... 200 square feet of catchment um, going into a 55 gallon drum with a hose bib so the drum can catch the storm surge off of the roof the roof at least some of it and then the hose can pressure equalize it and then just put it up at about the same height so these tanks i feel confident you know like using the sink it feels good finally to like be able to use water and using it for irrigation and just knowing that any little bit of rain and i'll have these two filled back up so anyway let's continue on and you got to pardon the mess um the sugar cane i'm leaving because this is great propagation type material um, for taking to school gardens so that's why i'm tolerating it um so yeah so the coop they're molting that's what that black uh feathers everywhere but so here's the first of of the water is on and uh, not leaking a lot of little work out the kinks i'm not getting many eggs this time of year it's uh the blackbirds are molting and um then there's also still the stress of um of the loss of life and everything i think so here how cool is this i got water and the sink is also plumbed that was another new project um so it goes right there it has a p-trap and it comes out Right there so this is going into a ditch that um, this ditch was created when I just grabbed the soil and threw it over to this side um, so it can take water all the way to the pond be low and wet and it's okay and um, I did plant tomatoes for fall in the pots I didn't post that video I made it but whatever and I see oh it's so many of these this time of year you know, passion fruit may pop. It's a good one. Check that out. Anyway, um, so the birds, I have a new bird that I don't think I documented. The birds are good. I could grab them some scratch. So this is the new bird. Um, this is Midnight. Midnight is <laughs> an old lady that's not going to lay any eggs. And um, she was another bird where she uh, 
lost the rest of her flock and was just on her own and somebody asked if I would take her in and she's pretty much a really really mean old lady and a bully and she, she picks on everybody like she became top of the pecking order instantly and uh, I think that's funny and McCanya is becoming just a, a sweetie hey oh I know right oh oh I know um, so so here's some updates so I did it's been it's been weeks so I did work in the run the main thing was I had a scare with Lacey getting sick like totally pale and lethargic and just didn't know what it was so I was working on the water system working on mainly the cleaning up the run and making sure the food wasn't spoiling or anything so what I did is I I lifted the soil and the whole run turned it turned all the compost um, it was really good stuff um, and then what I did just in case for mites and stuff is I built them a cool little sauna um, so this the soil here is dry because I put that on top and I poured in like a half a bucket of um, food grade diatomaceous earth and what I found though this is just from observation is that they don't like the edge to their dust bath they want to be able to see because it's kind of like a vulnerable time so I'm gonna take this off probably today it's just floating but um, just chance that it all mixes because I was trying to keep them from kicking the leaves and big things in but um, they were using it so much before I built this so this this part was on first and then I added that and it was like oh they're not using it as much um, so then I built them this and this is another it was just junk material that was around um, but this is more about when I have to bring in the new flock and start thinking about integrating because these spaces this one is just a little short you know they'll still go under there but it's not as easily and preferable and then the one on top is even shorter because they have to jump in so I was thinking a smaller bird might benefit and how's the watermelon I enjoyed it too yeah um, I already grabbed them some grass that's still coming in um, but basically I lifted probably three or four inches of material from across the whole run um, and just piled it up so these piles these are ridiculously awesome and pretty darn hot this one ha was a little more broken down uh, it's it's definitely 120 to 150 um, this one is going to be really hot I could even pull some steam out of here that's just a top cover but essentially there's just compost compost everywhere and I piled these up they've already settled about a foot from how high they first were and um, so it's pretty exciting I'm just gonna have to pull compost out of here this was the even more finished stuff that's not gonna be hot but gonna be more you know floor of the run that's gonna be ready to go soon I'm just kind of mixing in the uh, grass clippings as I get them hey again you coming to hang out come to say hi and that's about it you can see I took out the feeders so putting more effort into not leaving food here partially because of the predators um, partially because I want them to be healthy and not eat you know junky old stuff so no feeders they still get the all these water basins this is for cooling them off I don't know if you've known chickens love to stand in cool water and um, you know because they can't sweat like we can so losing heat through their feet and basically I don't have the full plan but the plan for integrating the two flocks because I have these 12 birds coming is to divide the run in half right on this post and is to give the new little birds um, either this side to start or that side completely but at some point switch them when they're maybe like two or three months old and then have the little birds start sleeping in the run like maybe two or three weeks before I'm going to integrate the flock so they'll be integrated before they're full size and I'll be able to use the 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 property the rest of the garden to kind of like help buffer that energy because these birds could be out all day right and it's not a big deal but to get the little birds sleeping in there by themselves on their own for like a week or two 
and then see what happens if I just take down all the barriers because they'll have probably been together for two months about uh, interacting and seeing each other. So I'm going to throw some scratch down in the run and I'm not going to let them out yet today. I've been, um, they really can be out as much as they want in the garden. Um, but i got a busy day so I won't be around very much. But that's it. Chicken's making compost, making beautiful hot stuff that is uh, going to be ready to go soon and eating some grass. So I think, I think that's all. You saw the plumbing. I ran that other line for irrigation. I, um, still on the fence about the grapes. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, oh, the, the nipple water. So I got, I put a set there. So there's two there. And then there's another set of three here. So this is, I don't know, no, probably a pretty standard system, but um, you need 11, 30 seconds bit for nipple waterers, and um, that's in two inch PVC, and you know, it's all threaded so it can be cleaned out, taken off. And then this is the hose. These are, pots can come out. So it's got its own bib. So this is gonna be huge for um, just being able to <laughs> rinse out food dishes and stuff. And it's pretty low pressure right now, but um, still handy to have it in the run that way. Yeah. What? I gotta get in the gate. Hold on. And that's what midnight does. All right, you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch y'all later. Peace.